Hi, welcome to another interesting episode on this channel. So in this video, we'll be looking at the concept of Fibonacci retracement and we'll be looking at real life examples. So the whole idea of Fibonacci is not new and is something that exists in artworks and in nature, but that is not where I'll be focusing on today. You could watch videos about those at your leisure, but it has a whole lot of formulas and theories behind it. But my main focus today will be how this is implemented into trading. And generally, there are three scenarios where traders have found a way to implement this Fibonacci tool. These include Fibonacci retracements, Fibonacci extensions, and Fibonacci projections. But for the sole purpose of this video, I will focus on the Fibonacci retracements. To really understand the, what the Fibonacci retracements entails, you need to understand the basics of price action. Now, theoretically, price moves in different ways. Among that is in a trend that price could be moving in an uptrend where it makes a series of consecutive higher highs and lower highs. And price also could be moving in a downtrend where it makes consecutive lower lows and lower highs. Also, price could be moving in a ranging form or a consolidating form where it has no clear, the market has no clear direction to which it follows. So these are basically some of the phases of market trend. What this Fibonacci tool basically focuses on is how to make entries for a trending market, how to get high quality entries for a trending market. Now, whenever price moves and makes series of higher highs and lower highs for an uptrend, this zone whereby price tilts back in the opposite direction of the trend is called the retracement. And that is the main focus of the Fibonacci tool. How to find quality entry points whereby you could enter and be at a safe level to ride the trend as it continues. Now, in order to understand this, you need to know that retracement has some basic characteristics that you could use to identify them. This characteristic includes that it's usually a short-term movement in the opposite direction of the trend and it occurs within a longer trend or in a breakout scenario. They're usually difficult to trade. It has a lot of uh, inducement within them, like candlestick patterns that would force you to take a trade. So retracements are not the main focus, but the continuation from the end of that retracement is the main focus. On your trading platform of choice, you could search for the retracement tool under the tool section, but for trading view, I have it here favorited. I will just draw it. So for an uptrend, we move from the lower low to the higher high to have a clear view. So you could see that the tool is kind of messy and has a lot of levels, which may not be of importance to us. So what we'll do is we'll click this tool. You go to settings, uncheck these boxes. These boxes are actually known as the Fibonacci levels. They are the backbone of the whole idea of trading with Fibonacci. Now, my favorite levels based on strategies that are proven to work are 
the 0 0.382, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. Now, whenever price comes down and bounces off from the 0 0.38, which is this yellow line here, this indicates that the trend is actually a strong trend and these trends are more difficult to manage because price will tend to move faster whenever it rejects from that level. Also, there is a 0 0.5 level which is considerably fair, but the zone of importance to me whenever I use this Fibonacci tool is the 0 0.5 to 0 0.618 level. These levels are pretty much key to your success when using this tool. Whenever price rejects from this level of 0 0.5 to 0 0.618, this zone, price tends to move better and predictably rather than fast moving strong trends that you see in the 0 0.3 level. So since price action is the same on every time frame, the Fibonacci can actually be used on all the time frames but the key idea here is that whenever you find a trend on that time frame you have to dial down to find entry signals it could be candlestick patterns or signs of rejection on the lower time frame before you actually take a trade i'll actually give you some checklists which i use personally to find entry levels when using the Fibonacci tool. Number one, I identify the market trend, identifying whether it's in an uptrend or in a downtrend should be the first step when you want to use the Fibonacci tool. Secondly, you identify the recent high and recent low of the trend. Now this part could be done based on experience, because the more you look at the chart, the easier it gets. You get used to it and finding these levels won't really give you much of a headache. But if you're a new trader and still find it difficult to spot this trend changes, you could use an indicator known as fractals. You could go to fractals, indicator tab, search for fractals, William fractals. So this is the indicator here, select it, and it's applied on your chart. Now, what this fractal does is find recent highs and lows in the chart, but you could see it's kind of too sensitive at the moment. What you could do to make this a little bit more sense accurate is going to the settings and changing this period to a higher period, probably an eight, and okay in it. Now you see that it's a little bit more, less noisy and it gives you better highs and lows. Now this, this as we said, is the second step to use the retracement tool. So the third step now is after finding this recent highs and lows, you draw the Fibonacci retracement levels starting from the bottom of the trend to the highest high of the trend for an uptrend and for a downtrend what we could do is you could draw the Fibonacci from the higher high to the lower low and you will find the levels for retracement so when price moves and comes back to test these levels, it will tend to reject and continue the trend. Then after finding this, after drawing this retracement tool, you find an entry level by stepping down your time frame to a lower time frame and or look for potential candlestick rejection patterns or whatever that you use as your signal to enter a trade based on your trading start strategy. And after finding these entry levels, what you do next is to you take the trade, set your stop loss and take profits and let the trade run. One key point I must note is that Fibonacci retracement tool cannot be used alone. As the name suggests, it's a tool and should be used in 
combination with other criteria that will form your strategy. For example, you could be using a break and retest strategy. Fibonacci is good at finding the continuation from that retest and moving on. So you could use support and resistance. You could use break and retest. You could also use indicators, whatever indicators that aligns with your strategies, such as the uh, moving average indicator or the anchored view up. I will also I will show you those how to use those indicators in the chart. But the main point is that Fibonacci retracement shouldn't be used alone. It should be used as a part of an existing strategy in order to have higher quality trade. Because most times it may not always re re and respect those levels, especially in strong reversal. The retracement may not always respect those levels. So, so the two scenarios where I personally use the Fibonacci retracement tool in the market is in a trending market where, which I've shown here, where markets make series of higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend and lower lows and higher lows in a downtrend. This is a trending market and I use this a lot in trending markets alongside other confirmations which I will use to know if the trend is going to continue. Then another scenario where it could be used is in a break and retest scenario where you have price ranging in a clear ranging pattern like this. It comes to this resistance, breaks it, it comes back, retests the resistance before continuing. In such scenarios, Fibonacci tends to act great in identifying such trends. So now I'll show you real life example of one of two of this for easier understanding. So this is a very good example of where I could potentially use Fibonacci retracement tool. So on the chart, we could see that price was actually on a downtrend from the peak and moved down to here. You could see a clear trend line and price rejected this trend line beautifully in the first few touches until it got to a low where it's reversed and broke out, right? Aside this breakout, in a situation where we were not able to catch this breakout, price actually formed a zone of rejection here before pushing up higher to a higher point of interest. This zone of rejection was as a result of this re rejection here, but this was not the main focus. Price still pushed higher to meet this higher point of interest here. Now, after price got to this level, we could see that it's began to reject and retrace. So price rejects from that level and starts pushing down. So we have found one confluence here, one reason to take the trade. So we'll bring out our Fibonacci tool. Currently we're on the four hours time frame. So this, the Fibonacci tool, I'll use it here. Now we could see that price came back to this zone of resistance that it created initially. It came to retest this zone of resistance. Now price came down to reject from this area. And another confluence I could use as a reason to take this trade is an indicator Use, I use for divergence strategy and this indicator is a stochastic indicator. So I'll add this to the chart and you could see that price gave a very beautiful divergence 
from this level here and on the indicator so that was a clear divergence so this is another confluence for me to take a trade and when I dial down to a lower time frame probably a one hour time frame and I look at candlestick patterns you could see that price came, is actually showing signs of rejection and retesting this support here. So this alone could be a reason for me to take a trade. And you could also want to add the anchored view up, which you could use to identify support and resistance level. So how you use it, you select the anchor view up, place it on the start of the trend. Then you have it showing like this. You go to the settings and change, untick every option that you have there. Leaving alone the anchored view up. Now this will give you potential levels of support and resistance. So this already, I have about four confluences for me to take a trade and this should be enough reasons for me to select trade here put my stop loss below the send high and take profit at the higher high giving us a risk to reward ratio of 3.1 or thereabout so this is just an example and it if you practice this on the chart, you will see that it happens a lot of times, especially the combination of divergence, retracements, and supports, resistance. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please do consider to subscribe and give this video a like. Thank you for watching.